This is Drom Shekasuto. Thanks for watching. It's a huge blessing that I am not able even to start, even to think how to describe what that, uh, the Creator is doing for us in our lifetime. A huge, huge, huge wonder, wonders and, and miracles are taking place in our lives and without us even being aware to the greatness of those huge developments and changes our lives are just literally rising to such divine places of holiness and spirituality in levels that never been exposed and revealed in the world before and even in the most famous generations when all of our nation experienced the wonders of coming out of Egypt and crossing the Red Sea and the wonders of um, getting into the Holy Land of Israel and the days of the Temple all those miracles and stories will are about to lose their taste compared to the new wave of miracles and wonders that are starting to um, take place in our lives. The only thing that we still lack of is is this inner building of our own vessels to contain and hold this light of redemption and in the religious world with no connection to which religion in all the religions because it's human nature always to chase yourself and blame yourself and also, it's the nature of the teachers, of the rabbis, of the, the priests, of whoever, always to rebuke and to preach and, 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 and to make you rush and to make you run faster and always to tell you that you need to achieve more and to invest more if you want to enjoy more. And when in reality, we saw and we can see it in our lives that those methods doesn't work. It doesn't really uplift us to no holier status, to no holier and happier place. We're not getting those spiritual levels by being miserable and, and sacrificing our mornings and our noons and our evenings and our nights. We're not getting nowhere with all this crazy panic of, I'm not doing enough, I must change myself. How can you change yourself? You can change your shirt, you can change your pants, <laughs> you, you can change your haircut if you still have some hair. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can change yourself. So, to be rebuked with the intention of changing yourself, hey, you must change, it's not going to help. Because if, let's say, for an example, a husband doesn't respect his wife, he doesn't treat her well at all. And now he will go and going to listen, going to hear a class. And in that class, the teacher will tell him, Hey, you need to talk to your wife nicely. You need to, to be more polite. Oh, it sounds good. When he will go home, he will try to do that because he realizes that he has a lot of troubles in his house. And he will want to get that, 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 that development in his life. And he will want to learn. But really, he doesn't solve his inner issues that are bringing him to be violent or angry and abusive to his wife. He's not solving them. He just heard a lecture that if he will be more polite or will say calm, good comments or will stop being negative or hard on his wife, so life will be better, happy li wife, happy life, whatever slogans. He will try that. So for a day or two, for a couple of uh, weeks, he will try, he will be nice, but as long as he's not fixing the roots, the reason, for those angers that are keep on blinding him when he is getting into pressure, into stress. 
So one situation suddenly will attack him that will jump out all the monkeys from his head and like that's it. Suddenly Tarzan is back to the forest. Like what are you going to do now? Like he's crazy. And now already two weeks he was watching his mouth close so for sure that you're going to get it this time. And why? Because even those teachers, even those rabbis, those priests, no, no matter, doesn't matter who, coaches for life, that they are trying to help you to fix the, the top layers, your behaviors, your manners, your way of expressing yourselves, are not touching the core, the root, the reason of your sorrow, of your pain, that is making you miserable in your own mind, in your own private life, and that sorrow, that pain that you carry within, that's the engine of all of your frustrations, for all your sadnesses, for all your pressure. Because of that you don't know how to handle your work. Because of that you don't know how to, have, to fix your relationships with people. For that you don't know how to communicate. For that you're like rejecting every comment. For that you don't know how to speak and you don't know what to say. And that's why you're fighting. Tell you not to fight is not the solution for your situation. To heal you from the roots of your problem is the only solution. Now, who can heal you in the roots of your soul? In this world, no one can help you with that. No one. Why? Because no one has the eyes to know what's going on inside of your heart. Even you righteous people, and I met many, I think at least that I met many. Even if you come and you chat with them and you speak with them and they have the time for you. Let's say that it's not measured in five minutes meeting or seven. I found myself sitting with one righteous man for at least one hour and a half. I was sitting with him in his office and he told me stories about his childhood. And he asked me questions and I answered them. We had a lot of time sitting and happy and everything was relaxed and everything was calm. And I took what that I took from that conversation, but really to open my guts on the table and to tell him all my heart, it was not even close to that. So maybe and hopefully, and I do believe that I've been blessed by that meeting, that some salvation came, that some, some good wind recovered me and healed me and helped me and maybe something very meaningful and powerful but still when I came out of that room at least my wife thinks that I came the same as I went in <laughs> in reality you know it's not like you go to a therapist once you go to a righteous man once even you give him huge amounts of charity it, it, it maybe gives you the power to make another step forward it doesn't always heal you completely I never heard about it and the clearest and strongest evidence for that is that in the generation of Moses Moses there was no one greater than Moses in his generation, even if you will want to say, no, no, haha, he doesn't know the Lubavitcher Rebbe. So the Lubavitcher Rebbe's generation, or Rabbi Nachman of Breslev's generation, or the Baal Shem Tov's generation, whoever you want, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, in their generations, their students messed up big time. Big time. The main helper of Elijah the prophet sinned in a horrible way. He betrayed his rabbi that was Elijah the prophet. I heard stories on helpers of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that they fell off the way after that he passed away. He went to heaven and they went straight to hell. Students of Rabbi Nachman of Westlev, Uman, Uman, Rosh Hashanah, and you can see also criminals are dancing and they're not exactly on the way to fix themselves. It's requiring a real inner work on yourself to heal yourself. Today we spoke about this Saturday of Hanukkah. Why people are flying to Uman. So many souls, so many people are flying every year to Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. And we spoke a little bit about Uman and the grave of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. And suddenly we realized and we, we, we thought about that. Hashem rem helped us to remember that Rabbi Nachman is buried between two hills and those hills, small mountains, are in the shape of a hill because that 30,000 Jewish people 
been murdered in that place 50 years before Rabbi Nachman of Breslev came to the world or 70 years before he even came to the world and it was a horrible, horrible um, um, decree. They've been slaughtered inside of a synagogue and they've all been buried in two, in two brother graves. And over there he chose to be buried. So now it came to my mind. You go to Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. Before you go to Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, think why Rabbi Nachman of Breslev decided to be buried over there. You're going on to a place that is, is, is still bleeding. And that place is holding souls of bodies of 30,000 people that have been murdered. You need to go with so much fear, with so much Yerat Shamayim, fear from heaven, when you walk into that place. And then there is also Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that huge pillar of light that illuminates the world with his wisdom and sensitivity. Great! But you need to connect yourself to reality. Now, if you go to celebrate, so it's a celebration and you don't feel and you don't connect to what that really goes on over there. The ground is bleeding. Children and women and men, strong ones and gentle ones and secular and religious and everyone been slaughtered for being Jewish. First of all, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, you, you need to connect yourself to reality now. If you go, for an example, like we said before, to a lecture and the rabbi is talking, you need to improve, you need to speak nicely. I'm sorry, it's not going to help you. Those kind of lectures that are coming to remove the top peel, the top covering, the first layer of, of, of your personality won't do no good. In two hours you're back in the sun, in and out, you drink one Coca-Cola and that's it and you forgot the class. Life will distract you because you haven't fixed yourself from within, from inside. But when we will work on ourselves means that we will want to work on ourselves, that we will find ourselves important enough to invest our time and our power and our money and our wisdom and our talents in building ourselves, on giving to ourselves a chance for life, then we will find an inner link to eternity. We're going to find the spring of our soul that is pulling holy water from heaven. We're going to find ourselves in touch with the Creator, the One that we read about Him in books. You read about the Creator in books while the Creator is your best friend and walking with you even to the bathroom, even to the shower, even to the most contaminated places. He's walking with you, not hand in hand. He lives inside of you. Now for us, it's so hard to understand really what is our great potential because we have been blinded from life scenes, from situations that traumatized us, that hurt us, that broke our self-esteem. And that's how we lost our direction in life. And everyone thinks that he is his coverings. And you think that you're a woman and he thinks that he's a man. And you think that you're six feet tall and he thinks that he's 5.4. And everyone are crazy. They think that they have a name and they have an address and that's the amount of money they hold in their wallet when they are not even here at all. And I'm going to explain to you, even from side of science, when you try to go deep and look with a microscope to the ground, to physicality, you're going to take any material that you want. Let's take for an example your skin. And you're going to look with a microscope. What that you will observe, will see with your eyes, first of all, is the first layer of your skin. You're going to meet your skin, and then you're going to go deeper. And then you're going to see that the skin looked cracked. So you're going to have like a dry ground cracked with cracks that are separating pieces 
from the next one. So you're going to find out that there is a certain space, air, that is separating those dry pieces of skin. And then you're going to go deeper. And then you're going to see that between, you're going to go deeper into the layer, not into the air, not into the crack. Go into that piece of skin in a deeper vision to look closer. What you're going to see that suddenly that piece of or of skin that looked for you like a piece of ground, of earth, suddenly you're going to recognize that it's built from cells. And you're going to say, great, millions of cells are creating that piece that together, millions of those pieces are creating the skin of our hand. Great. Now, what you're going to do, you go deeper into that cell not to the borders of the cell, not to the air that is separating one cell from the next. You're going to go deeper into one of those cells. What you're going to see over there, that it's also divided as a net, that there is a net over there. So what then you're going to do? You're going to realize that you have separations that are dividing between particles. And if you're going to go inner and inner, deeper and deeper to the next layer and then to the next and to the next, always you're going to find yourself in the same situation that you have dividings between physical things that are building something bigger, larger, Right? Now, in every one of those situations that you will look at physicality, at those cells that are building your structure or any other physical um, materia, you're going to see the same pattern. You're going to see parts that are separated, floating next to each other with some energetic force that is holding them like a magnet close to each other. And between them, you're going to see a space. And you, as that person that is observing, that is looking at physicality to investigate it, you're always an outsider to physicality. You're always in the air. You're always in the space. Even when you decided, like I said in the beginning of my explanation on that, don't go into the crack. Don't go into the space between the cells. Go into the cell itself. You're investigating the materia, the physical materia itself. Even when you go into it, you never meet it. You can never touch it. Because in infinity, between two dots, you can always put another dot. And when you have those two very close ones, if you will look closer, you're going to realize that there is a space between them and you can put a dot over there. So in reality, even if you will go into the deepest layer of them all, you will never find it. Why? Because it's not exist. There is no last line. There is no end to the layers. So every part of our life is not flat is a channel, it's a pipe, and it's going like that into the core of physicality, and for sure that when you look to the sky, there is the air and the atmosphere, and the, how you call that? Atmosphere? Mm-hmm. Atmosphere, and after it you have stratosphere, I don't know how you call those things, in, in, I barely know how to say it in Hebrew, so in English. <laughs> I haven't used enough LSD in my life. (laughs) So, in reality, for sure that after the space you have a larger space, and in the end of that space you have a larger space, and larger and larger and larger, and it never ends. Like, sorry to disappoint you, it never ends. So it's not only that the world to come is endless and eternal, you live inside of a physical world that is actually not physical at all, because to physicality you don't have no access. You can never touch it. You think that you eat the fruit, but in reality you don't eat the fruit. You are bringing into your body wrapped with physicality, a spiritual spark that gives you life. And also, not because that it was inside a fruit, only because that the Creator wants to give you life. Because another person can die while chewing the same fruit. 
It's not the fruit that gives you life. Not on the bread alone the person will live. Just on every word of Hashem. If Hashem said that you will be alive, nothing in the world will kill you. Nothing in the world can kill you because the Creator, He is creating the reality. The reality of our life is a creation. It's not under the rules of nature. The nature is running and spinning in the same direction for thousands of years because of the will of the Almighty. Only because that He wanted it to be. If He would want something to change, it would have been changed already. The only reason why it's still like it is because He wants it to be. Because when He said that there's going to be light, there was light. And when He wanted darkness, it was night. And when he wanted stars to play in that game, suddenly stars appeared in, in the sky, above the ground. And when he wanted flowers and trees and bushes, he made them happen. He brought them down to this world to catch a physical shape. Now who are you when I'm asking you? Who are you inside all of this fantastic world? Who are you? Are you your body? Where do you see from? You see from your eyes, through your eyes? You see through your eyes, through the pupils that you have. What are those pupils that you have? Holes. Those are holes. How do you hear? Your ears? No. You have holes in your ears, through the holes. How do you speak? Through your mouth? Throat? No. Through it. Through the hole. The soul is hearing, the soul can see, the soul can speak, the soul can smell through the holes. Only when it's separated from physicality, because physicality is dead. It's dead. It's earth. It's ground. It's nothing. It's ashes. It's going down the drain. But when the Creator puts soul into it, it's alive and it's green and it makes amazing sounds and smells and it's fantastic and it can dance like in the Disney movies. If Hashem wants, the creation will dance. You will open the door, the, the windows in the morning and like the birds of Mary Poppins, they will fly to your window and you'll be happy with them. Yes! Because the candles of Sarah and Rivka and Rachel and Leah were lit from Friday afternoon till next Friday afternoon. And the bread in the temple was warm from one Shabbat to the next. And miracles and wonders are taking place in this creation whenever the Creator wants. When Moses had to take Am Israel, so the sea been opened to two. And when Elijah the prophet had to cross the Jordan River, it opened to two. And when Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu and Avi, both of them Elijah, Elisha. You have Elijah, Eliyahu, there is no name to Eli Eli Elisha? Elisha. 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 Elijah and Elisha. Now it's making up names, whatever we want. Like Disney, like I said. A fantasy. All taking place in, in, in English, everything can happen. It's a pen, right? It's a pen. You're going to say it's a pen. When Elijah the prophet is crossing on his way to that place that he went up to heaven, and on the way back, Elisha the prophet is crossing the Jordan River, opening the, the river, and when Yeshua Binun with all of his people and the Kohanim and the Leviim are about to enter to Eretz Israel to the Holy Land, so the Jordan River again splits to two, and stories in the generations are telling us and describing to us miracles that happened to hundreds of righteous people. When? When the Creator wanted those wonders to take place in our lives. Now we are not different than our ancestors, except of in one thing, that our self-esteem is destroyed and been crushed for thousands of years of exile. That's the only difference. From a mandarin trees, only mandarins gonna come to the world for billions of years ahead. They will not change their nature because their nature is to be mandarins because the Creator made them to be mandarins. 
Now, when you're the children of the 12 tribes of Israel, you have the blessing of the 12 tribes installed inside of you, even if today you don't know who you are and that you are connected to the tribes and your name is Muhammad and you were born to a woman named Fatma in Pakistan and you're riding your donkey to work in the field of your neighbor and you don't have a clue that you have Israeli roots because the tribe of Menashe 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, made his way to Afghanistan, Pakistan, because they were merchants, and after they'd been exiled by the king of Ashur, they found themselves lost out there, and they lost their tradition, and they lost their touch, but they belong to the holy tribes, so they are still carry that holy spark of being called the childs of Israel inside of them. And to all those crazy people that thinks that only the Jewish people will be redeemed or only those ones that kept their tradition out there in the exile will be redeemed. To all those sick and crazy people, I'm telling you that the stoves, that the ovens, I'm sorry, of the Nazis were ready to burn also those ones that were not Jewish by, by generations. Everyone that had one parent, even three generations ago, they took him to the stove. They burned him alive. Why? Why? He was not Jewish. The Jewish of that generation wouldn't accept him. He couldn't come to shul. He couldn't pray with them. He was not allowed to put fili, not to keep Shabbat, not to marry the daughter of this uh, Jewish. They were out of the camp of Israel. Why they been burned? Why the devil that caused that horrible holocaust chose them to put them into the oven as well? If not because of their holiness. If not because of those holy sparks that are planted inside of them even if they don't wear a kippah and they're not keeping the tradition and they're not even part of the Jewish nation because they are Israelis. Because their souls are much greater than you can, than you can imagine in your life. Because you don't know what it means to be an Israeli. You still don't understand who you are, what your powers are. What, what is the greatness of the blessing that you've been blessed with. Because today you're judging yourself on your physicality. With which tools? With your blindness? With the fact that you're deaf? With the fact that you're totally blocked from and disconnected from reality? With which tools? With the fact that it's hard for you to wake up in the morning? Listen, it's also hard for me to wake up in the morning. Really? That you're not rich? I'll tell you the truth, I'm not rich as well. That you're not driving your own car? I'll tell you the truth, I'm not driving my own car. That you still haven't bought a house? I also renting a house. That you're not in the Holy Land of Israel? Listen, I'm also not in the Holy Land of Israel. What more to tell you? That you forgot to say Aleve Yavo. I forgot many times to say Aleve Yavo. And also many times on purpose I didn't say Aleve Yavo. You want me to lie to you? I'm sorry. I'm not working for no one. So I don't need to hide myself. When you have a boss and you're afraid that he will fire you. But I am serving the Creator. I just know who he wants me to be because he's opening my eyes and my heart to recognize the honest path, the path of truth. So I don't need to make it up to present myself to you in a better light than I am. Even though that a better light could be useful here. <laughs> but in reality, I, for being honest, for being able to deliver the light of truth to you cannot be nothing else except except of being truthful there's nothing else I can do if I really want to give you an access to the truth I must be truthful if I will be phony if I'll be a liar the Creator will leave me alone and will go to look for someone else to deliver the news to deliver the the Torah the wisdom through to talk lies to deny reality, to disconnect yourself from the truth, is to separate yourself from life.
Why a person is suffering in this world? Why? Because he cannot be who he is, who he dreamt to be, who he wished to be. He wants to sail the sea, he wants to dance, he wants to learn, he wants to pray, he wants to do long individual prayers in Bodhidhyat in the fields. He wants to learn about the stars. I don't know what he desires. When you, thank you, I told you they're going to be miracles. <laughs> the Creator created you because He's the Creator. Now, as the Creator, trust me, He has the knowledge and the sensitivity, the wisdom to know exactly how to create His creations. That's His power. That's who He is. He's the Creator of the world and He knew. He knows exactly what are the tools that you need to have as a soul, which vehicle to choose for you as a soul with a purpose to go and work in this world of lies. In this world of distractions, in these confusing worlds that have days and nights and lights and darkness and people and opinions and movies and channels and songs and CDs and iPods and iPhones and you can lose your connection. The Creator gave you tools to complete your mission and you think that it's a small tiny mission but there are machines that cannot work with one screw that will go lost. Without that tiny screw, everything's screwed up. <laughs> Why? Because the Creator wants you as a tiny screw to understand your importance and your greatness. That the machine cannot work without you. And when we are talking about the Bible that has 6,000 letters written in it, and every letter is being compared and equal to one of the souls of Israel, we're not talking about the souls of the tribe of Judah, that this is the Jewish nation that we know today. We're talking about the larger picture. Hundreds of millions of people that are still in the exile don't know who they are, don't remember the name of their parents, don't remember the roots of their families, don't understand and cannot realize which branch they are connected to that is coming in his roots to become one of the wives of Jacob means that he was sitting with us as the holy tribes on the table of our father Jacob. And today he can look Chinese in China and he can be in Afghanistan and Pakistan and he can be in Russia and he can be in America. America opened the gates for all nations. He can walk between us in a friendly face, in a very nice way of, of being holy and nice and simple. And he doesn't have no connection to Judaism at all. He never been educated, never heard about your tradition, never crossed his mind to serve and to obey to no one. He can be a drug addicted and he can be the biggest billionaire that is, I don't know what he's doing with his life. You don't know what is going and what is about to take place in this world. You should believe. And like I said, to those people that are teaching and explaining to us that those souls that are out there, those souls that are not married to Jewish women, that those souls that fell, that they didn't came from a Jewish mother, I'll tell you my answer. You don't know your father. You don't know your father. A father is a holy father that been represented by the first of the believers. His name was Abram. The first one that shown us the real nature of Hashem that taught us about the Creator was Abram. He was the man of faith. He was the one that was a non-Jew that opened his eyes to investigate and to look for the truth and he found that there is a creator behind all the curtains and when that person Abram had a child from his wife Hagar that she was not Jewish and then that child was not behaving well, misbehaved and his first wife, Sarah, told him, I don't want that kid in my house anymore. Abram didn't know what to do with himself. And he came to her 
and he begged, please, what are you telling me? It's my son. Hey, but it's your son, not from a Jewish woman. It's your son from a foreign woman. You know that that son is not holy. It's not Yitzchak. It's not the one that is about to inherit. Abram couldn't handle that. Why? Because it was his son. Like, what are you talking about? It's my son. <laughs> That's reality. And after Sarah passed away, he had few more wives. And all the children from those wives are also out there in the world, and none of them is Jewish, and they're being called Benash Fachot, and we're talking about nations on nations on nations that are over there somewhere that he blessed them and gave them gifts when they went to their way, to their path in life, and he gave them codes, and he gave them secrets, and he gave them certain blessings and spiritual gifts for them to survive till the last generation. And what will happen in that last generation? Suddenly the spirit of Mashiach will hover above the water. And that pure wind of hope will remove all the ashes, all the darkness above the holy souls. And suddenly your eyes won't be blind anymore. And suddenly you're going to recognize who you are in the nature of your creation. Not because of the greatness of your deeds, the quality of your actions. Just because of the pure thought of the Creator making you included in that amazing holy nation of Israel. The amazing nation of Israel is not only the Jewish nation that we know as Israelis today. The Jewish nation is the Israeli nation is built by 12 tribes. Holy, gigantic, blessed tribes that are all in the exile. And from the darkness of the exile, in one moment, they're all waking up. And suddenly you have a wide world of cooperation, of unity, of love, of brotherhood. People are helping each other, supporting each other, building each other. The Jewish arrogance that we have today inside of ourselves, that's what we need to work on, get rid of. And not to think to ourselves, no, I'm Jewish. You're Jewish? You think you're Jewish? Rabbi Nachman of Breslev asked himself, when I'm going to be Jewish? Rabbi Nachman of Breslev asked that. Huge righteous people on their deathbed ask to go for the last time in their life to the mikveh with the intention of converting they went in the last time of their life to the mikveh. Begged to convert to Judaism when they were from, from birth, religious from birth. 70 generations, 30 generations of holy families, holy pure ancestors. When you are righteous, when you are pure, when you are great and wise, you see your humility, how zero you are. You see how worthless, how empty you are, and how great is the Creator that planted the Holy Soul inside of you, and you keep on working hard to connect yourself to that, to Him, to the source of light. So you have money, what does it make you? So you learn thousands of books, so what does it make you? If your wife still cannot forgive you on how miserable you made her to be, what will forgive you if your best friend cannot forgive you? If she is still not open to rebuke you and to tell you all her heart? What do you think that will save you in Judgment Day if your children are scared of you? If your friends are not telling you all the truth, if you're not an honest person, even to go and to do one hour in Bodhidut every day, and that Rabbi Nachman of Breslev will back you up, I tell you, throw those nonsense from your head immediately. If you think that some one person, the biggest, the pillar of light, Adam Arishon, going to stand for you in Judgment Day, forget about it. You need to have the ability to stand up for yourself, 
Not being righteous for Judgment Day, being truthful. You know who needs someone to protect him? A liar. Only a liar needs a lawyer. That's why it's the same letters. <laughs> Sounds the same. A liar, he needs a lawyer. Why? Because he doesn't know how even what the truth is to say, to save his skin. But an honest person, he will stand and will say, I don't know, like I tried. Look, I did this, I did that. I didn't have a clue. Oh, was it wrong? I'm sorry. So teach me, please. He will be honest and will walk forward. And he will want to be judged by the best judge of them all. Because he feels about it himself that he was honest, that he is a person of truth. So he won't be scared of no judgments. Because judgments cannot rule him. Because he can win those judgments and, and, and overpower them in Midat Adin. When it's judging him, he'll have answers. When he will be asked, he will have the answer. That's a Baal Tshuva, a person that owns the answer. That he completed his search and became a Baal Tshuva. Now he knows the answer. What's the answer? The truth. Say the truth. There is only one answer, the truth. What's that? That's a plate. One truth about it. What's its color? White. Great. Another truth about it? It made out of paper. Great. Something else to say about it? Only one. The reality of what it is. Now, what it's not? Every other option in the world. It's not a sofa. It's not a car. It's not a house. It's not you. It's not you. It's not you. It's not me. It's not an iPhone. It's not an iPad. Millions of things it's not. It's only what it is. You want to connect yourself to the truth, to the one, to the creator? Speak the truth to yourself in your heart and to the people that are surrounding you. Be honest. That's what you're being asked for. Only that. Be people of truth and the light of the creator will shine upon you all with no differences, with no connection to your color, to your accent, to your families, to your branches, to your community, to the land that you're living in. You don't know where you are. You're above the place. You're between. You're in the spaces. You're a spiritual being. You don't have a physical place. You cannot judge a person until you get to his place. You know why? Because he doesn't have a place. That's why you can never judge a person. Because the Creator is above the place. And the Creator and His Torah and Am Israel, all Am Israel, are one unit. We're above the place. You not belong here. You're a visitor. You're a guest. You're on a mission. You can be a soldier. You can be the one that comes to make the soldiers happy. You can be a dancer. You can be a singer. You can play your guitar. You have your mission in life, be happy. Do your job. Stand tall and be proud of yourself and be honest with who you are. And say the truth. I'm not able to function. I don't know what to do with myself. I lost my mind. I need help. If that's your truth, it will bless you. When you'll say it, you will start your recovering process. But as long as you're going to still lying and pretending, no, me, I'm perfectly fine. You're going back. You're digging a hole that you're burying yourself in. There's no way out when you're, when you're lying. There is no escape way. Only when you're honest, immediately you're on the highway, fast, climbing and rising up. You can never imagine the greatness of our souls, of our spirits. Don't let no one judge you. If someone is, close your ears. Don't listen to him. Don't listen. For sure don't accept his words. Connect yourself to your inner source, to your true being. Ask yourself, okay, who am I? What's my mission? What should I do? Should I apologize? Apologize. Should I ask for help? Ask for help. Can I help? Can I assist? Help, assist. Do the best you can with your time, with your life, with your power. Do as much as you can. As long as you're not falling into lies. I'll help you. For sure, don't worry. Call me. Come on. It never works. When you come out of a place of arrogant, 
trying to please other people, nothing will work and everything will fail. But then you'll be honest, even if you cannot help, you will tell that person, but I care, I literally want to help, I will think, what can I do? It will bring a blessing between you. He will see your honesty. Your look will mean the world for him, even if you're not capable of doing anything to help. He will recognize your love and your dignity and your honesty. Thank you. I believe in you greatly. And you should believe in yourselves as well. Thank you so much. May Hashem bless us all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If I can just please um, complete my um, words. Um, the Muna Project is a non-profit organization and the evidence for that is that we're not making no profits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you don't need a clearer evidence than that. Please help us. And more important than that, please fill your information in the envelopes, emails and phone numbers that we will be able to send you uh, more links to more content. A friend told me a few days ago that he thought that he watched all my videos and then he realized that there are more than 1,000 that he never knew exist. So there's much to watch. Thousands of hours of uh, great lectures that will give you the power to find yourselves, to find uh, your Creator and the light in your life. Thank you very much. Um, men that uh, hosted us tonight and thank you so much all for coming and may the blessing of Hashem will hover upon you all Amen I hope you enjoyed this video very much please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world for more please visit emuna.com may your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings Amen.